Welcome to Module 1, the system's approach to quality assurance for pharmacy practice, a framework for mitigating risk. Before beginning, we would like to acknowledge the assistance of ISMP Canada for their contributions in developing this presentation. This includes material from the 2007 Canadian Failure Mode and Effects Analysis Framework. Upon completing this module, you will be able to describe the origin and use of FMEA. FMEA is a team-based systematic and proactive approach for identifying ways that a process or design can fail, why it might fail, and how it can be made safer. You're probably already applying some form of FMEA in your practice, but you're just not aware of it. You might even be satisfied with your current processes because nothing bad has happened yet. But the key is to prevent accidents or errors waiting to happen by actively improving your current processes. FMEA can be used by pharmacy teams to review processes that are currently in place and improve them to enhance patient safety, reduce risks, and prevent errors from happening. By applying FMEA, you and your pharmacy team will be able to meet or exceed the standards of practice for pharmacists and pharmacy technicians and the standards for the operation of licensed pharmacies with respect to participating and implementing a quality assurance program in your pharmacy. FMEA has been in use for more than 50 years, beginning in the aerospace industry in the 1960s. In the 1970s and 80s, it expanded to other fields, including nuclear power, aviation, chemical, electronics, and food processing fields. The automotive industry requires it from suppliers to reduce after-the-fact corrective actions. These industries are high reliability organizations because they have been successful in managing substantial risk with very low failure rates. When should you use FMEA? Well, it is a tool for perspective analysis. It is about identifying vulnerabilities in systems before things go wrong. In other words, identifying accidents waiting to happen. You can remember this by thinking of the F in FMEA as being about the future. In contrast, tools used to analyze incidents that have already occurred are retrospective. They analyze things that have already happened. You can use FMEA to meet requirements B and C of SOLP 6.3, which states that a licensee must ensure that a quality assurance process is implemented and maintained in a licensed pharmacy. The quality assurance process should include regular review and feedback mechanisms to prevent drug incidents and include a process or procedure for responding to complaints or concerns. This will help your pharmacy team to meet the ultimate goal of FMEA to prevent harm from reaching a patient. The FMEA team selection is aligned with the ACP standards of practice for pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. Both pharmacists and pharmacy technicians are required to participate in quality assurance processes in the pharmacy. Because pharmacy licensees and corporate managers have a key responsibility for the overall management of the pharmacy, their involvement in an FMEA helps to demonstrate commitment to a systems-based approach to providing care. They are also responsible for overseeing the implementation of recommendations for system change as per SOLP 6.1. It states, a licensee must ensure that the licensed pharmacy has appropriate systems, policies, and procedures in place to minimize the risk of a drug incident or an adverse drug event, and that regulated members and employees of the licensed pharmacy are trained and are required as a term of their employment to comply with those systems, policies, and procedures. Preventative processes undertaken with the goal of preventing errors require a similar level of involvement by the licensee. Regardless of whether an incident has occurred, if the pharmacy team identifies a potential risk, the licensee will take preventative actions as appropriate to prevent incidents. The takeaway message is that FMEA focuses on how and when a system will fail, 
not if it will fail. We need to understand that no matter how well a system is designed, there is always a potential for failure. FMEA requires an understanding of the underlying principles of systems approach, just culture, and the impact of human factors engineering principles on error potential and solutions development. The systems approach recognizes that individual practitioners work in an imperfect system, and in order to make the system safer, it is necessary to look beyond the actions of an individual. Our culture is shifting in an important way, from blaming the providers involved to what David Marx has called a just culture, in which practitioners are accountable for their actions within the system, but not for the way the system has been built. Sometimes, practitioners are set up for errors by factors that are beyond their control, or error prevention that requires unrealistic levels of personal vigilance. In a just culture, practitioners are expected to practice in a way that minimizes the opportunity for errors in their own practice and also to proactively identify opportunities for error and then bring them forward to the team for discussion and resolution. To better understand why an error occurred or how to prevent an error, we need to understand the interrelationship between the design of our work environment and how we as health professionals interact within that environment. Human factors engineering is a branch of engineering science that focuses on how we as humans interact with the world around us. Human factor engineers try to design products and processes to fit with our human characteristics so that work flows in a way that feels natural. Human factoring engineering is a fundamental concept to understanding how errors happen and what type of actions will be most effective in reducing recurrence and preventing accidents waiting to happen. If these principles are not familiar to you, you can find out more by viewing the modules leading up to systems analysis of drug incidents, the systems approach to investigating drug incidents, and the systems approach to quality assurance for community pharmacies framework itself.